Hello everyone, welcome again to Biofluid Mechanics and uh, today uh, we're going to go over lecture 18 which is basically the final lecture before uh, assignment number two and exam number two. In the lecture today we're going to exercise the same uh, methodology that we used in the previous lecture to take a full RLC circuit despite of the complexity of the circuit or regardless of the complexity of the circuit, reduce that to a set of coupled ordinary differential equations, first order ordinary differential equations. And we'll do that with a with a case today that has uh, uh, three compartments. And when I, again, when I mention compartments, when I say compartments, I'm referring to a, each compartment being a set that includes a resistor, an inductor, and a compliance or a capacitor in parallel. All right, so um, let me switch to the document camera. So the idea here is, uh, this is uh, biofluid mechanics. And uh, we're lecture number 18. So regardless of the complexity of the RLC circuit, that is, regardless of the number of compartments in the circuit, the outcome of the analysis will be a system of coupled ODEs, and these are all first order with an NQ number of flow rates unknown equal to the number of inductances in the circuit, circuit and NP number of pressure pressures unknown equal to the number of capacitors in the circuit. So this is a pretty simple rule. You basically look at the circuit, count the number of inductances, and that should be the number of unknown flow rates that you'll have in your final set of equations, and then count the number of capacitors and that will be the total number of pressures that will be unknown in your set of equations. And the sum of those two will give you the number of state variables, or the number of unknowns, or degrees of freedom, or whichever way you want to call it, in your formulation. So during the first formulation of the system of ODEs, the number of unknown quantities, that is fluid flow, flow rates and pressures, will always be larger than the number of equations. Number of equations. So on the first pass, well, you apply um, Ohm's law and, and Ries law to get uh, an equation that describes the flow rates, um, and then you apply any time you see a resistor and, a and a, an inductor, and every time you see a capacitor, you apply uh, Faraday's law, and then you get an equation that describes the pressure change in that uh, in that uh, capacitor. 
Now, uh, once you do that, you're going to get a whole a number of unknowns that's far larger than the number of equations that you end up with. The use of KCL and KVL, these are Kirchhoff's laws, Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's, uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law, will be necessary and sufficient to reduce the number of total state variables to NQ plus NP. Okay, and that's the goal. The goal is to reduce the whole system so that your only unknowns in the set of equations is NQ plus NP. NQ being the number of inductors and NP being the number of capacitors. And uh, you'll see that again, regardless of the complexity of the system, this will always turn out to be the case. Okay. All right. So um, let's try this. Let's try this in a system that has uh, three compartments. Uh, the one that we looked at last week or last lecture had uh, only two compartments. Let's look at one with three compartments and see if we can make sense of this methodology here. So let's say that we have the following circuit sample. And we have a circuit here with, that, again, is driven by a pump, the delta P of the pump. And we're going to use the same sinusoidal uh, pump that we've been using. And then we have this QP, the flow rate going through the pump. Um, then we have this node that we're going to call node 0, in which we state P0 of T. And then this branches up into, up and down into two branches. In the upper branch, we're going to have RA, LA, and then we're going to have another node where we have P1. And coming out of this node, we have compliance C1, or capacitor C1. And on the lower branch, we have R B L B, then we have a uh, node here. We're going to state this as P two, connect it to a capacitor C two, and then this two connect, and then we have a node here. We have R C. LC, and then we have another point here, which we're going to call P3, and this is C3, and then this returns to the pump. Let's just go farther down, right here. Okay, forget about this. Um, so let's start labeling things here. Um, again, we're going to use this nomenclature now that resistors and uh, inductors are label, labeled with letters. And then the corresponding flow, I'm going to call QA. Same thing here, QB. The capacitors are labeled with numbers, C1 and C2, and C3 in this case. Um, and the flow that goes into the capacitor, we're going to label with the same number as the capacitor label, so Q1, and then this one is Q2. Conversely, this one is then QC, and this one will be Q3. Okay, um, there's a few uh, loose ends here. Obviously, if there's a flow that comes in, it's called QA, and this one is Q1, there's going to be a remaining flow here on this branch, so we're going to call QA1. We know that that Flow is not associated directly with an inductor, so it's going to have to disappear from the set of equations. And then this one we're going to call Q, uh, uh, QB2. 
okay, so which is the remaining flow of QB after it goes through C2. Okay. In addition, we have these uh, these note here, which we can call. Uh, there's almost no room here, but we know that there's nothing in the middle between this node and this node, and between this node and this node. So these two pressures have, have to be equal to this pressure here, and they have to be equal to each other. So we're going to call this with P12 of T. P12 of T. And uh, likewise, we have QC and Q3. And therefore, the remaining flow here that comes out of this node, we can call QC3. But we know that it's going to merge with the pump and uh, instead of just coming up with another Kirchhoff current formula, we just call this one QP. QP. So the flow that comes out of this node, which is QC minus Q3, is equal to the same thing that goes through the pump because of continuity. Okay, we can call it Q3, uh, QC3, but then we're going to find out that it's the same thing as the flow that goes through the pump. All right. So look at these uh, particular uh, this particular uh, circuit and notice that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve unknowns total that we've actually drafted and identified in the circuit. There's twelve unknowns, but we're only going to have access to one, two, three, four, five, and six equations. We only have six equations and uh, we have a total of 12 unknowns, so we're going to have to reduce that eventually. So the goal here is a system of six equations. Again, six equations because we have one, two, three inductors and one, two, three compliances or capacitors. So at most we can produce six equations with six unknowns and these unknowns are essentially the flows and the pressures associated with each of the inductors and each of the capacitors so eventually or ultimately what we want is a set of equations for qa p1 qb p2 qc and p3 okay so these flow this pressure this flow this pressure this flow this pressure the other ones are going to be eliminated by reduction using the methodology of KCL and KBL. So let's look at the equations. What are the equations that show up or that are derived from these? Well, let's start with uh, P0 minus P1. This pressure, the drop of pressure between 0 and 1 is due to this resistor and this inductor. So, P0 minus P1 should be equal to LA dQA dt plus RA QA of t. Again, Henry's law, Ohm's law. is what dictates the drop of pressure between point 0 and point 1. Add these particular capacitor we have that c1 times dp1 dt should be equal to the flow going into that capacitor going in or out of that capacitor if the pressure is increasing the flow will go on go into the capacitor if the pressure starts decreasing with respect to time then the flow will go out of the capacitor so we can do the same on the lower branch between p0 and p2 so p0 minus p2 is equal to LB dQB dt plus RB QB of t. And we can do the same at this juncture here, at this node. C2 dP2 dt is equal to Q2. There you go. Likewise, we can establish the difference in pressure between this point and this point. So the pressure drop P12 minus P3 equals LC dQC dt plus RC QC of t. Well, the pressure change at this point 
equals or times the, comp the compliance C3 or the capacitor C3 equals Q3. So C3, DP3, DT equals Q3 of T. So that is our set of available equations. That's it. We have six equations. But if you count the number of unknowns in these equations, you'll notice that there's 12. And at the end of this process, we're only supposed to keep this one, this one, this one, this one, P2. Oh, P1 and P1 appear here, P2 and P2 appear here. Then we're supposed to keep QC, right, and P3, P3, and Q3. I'm sorry. Q3, we have to eliminate. Q2, we have to eliminate. Q1, we have to eliminate. P0, we have to eliminate. P0, we have to eliminate. Uh, P12, we have to eliminate. So those are the ones with the X are the ones that we have to eliminate from the equation, and the ones with the check mark are the ones that we're supposed to keep. The only six remaining ones, the only six that we're supposed to shoot for, for a complete set of equations and unknowns. We have six equations. We have to reduce this to six unknowns. All right, so let's see how we do this. No. Move these down here. So let's see. We can apply, to begin with, KCL and no zero. KCL at zero means that the flow of the pump that goes in, QP, should be equal to QA plus QB. So the pump flow goes into Q0 and what leaves is QA and QB. Then we can apply KCL at no one. And at no one we have QA coming in and going out we have Q1 and QA1. QA goes in and going out we have Q1 plus QA1, which didn't even appear in the equations, but we're going to use it as a crutch to eliminate perhaps Q1 from the equation. We'll see. QCL and note number two, same thing. And note number two, we have QB coming in and Q2 and QB2 coming out. QB, Q2, plus QB2. Then at note one, two, KCL, at note one, two, we have QA1 and QB2 coming out, coming in. QA1 plus QB2 coming in. And coming out, we only have QC. All right. And then finally, at note number three, right here, KCL at three. We have QC coming in, and then coming out, we have Q3 plus QP. Know that this is QP. Again, we could have called the QC3, but we know that that is going to match exactly QP because another we could have done another note law here or here, and whatever comes in is equal to whatever comes out. Continue. All right. So what do we want out of these? Sort of equations. Remember that we want to eliminate Q1, Q2, and Q3. So the goal is to write those in terms of QA, QB, and QC, which are the ones that we want to keep. So the goal, the goal is to write Q1, Q2, and Q3 in terms of QA, QB, and QC only. All right. So what we do then is, uh, well, let's take, for example, KCL at one and KCL at two, add them together, right? And we'll know that uh, that's Q1 plus Q2 equals to something that is equal to QA plus QB. So if we take KCL at 1 and solve for Q1 is equal to QA 
minus QA1, and KCL at 2, E2 is equal to QB uh, minus QB2, and then we just add them together, and we'll get Q1 plus Q2 is equal to QA plus QB minus QA1 plus QB2. QA1 plus QB2. And QA1 plus QB2, notice that it's from KCL12, this one plus this one is equal to QC. So this one right here from KCL12 is equal to QC of T. So the first reduction here is that Q1 plus Q2 is equal to QA plus QB minus QC. Okay. So now we put 1 and 2 in terms of A, B, and C. At least it's some of them in terms of A, B, and C. Also, let's look at uh, KCL at node 3, and we'll notice that Q3 is equal to QC minus QP. And if we notice QP from KCL0 is equal to QA plus QB. So, basically, now we have Q3 is equal to QC minus QA minus QB. So we have this additional equation that relates Q3 to Q, B, A, and C. Okay. Also, note that P1 is equal to P12, which is equal to P2. And we're just going to call these P12 of T. So if we look back at, at the circuit, this pressure here is equal to this pressure here. There's nothing in between. This pressure here is equal to this pressure here. There's nothing in between. And therefore, P1 and P2 have to be equal to each other. And we're just going to call that one P12. Okay. So if this is the case, so P1 is equal to P12, which is equal to P2, and we're just going to call that, define those as P12. In addition, we can go back to the circuit and use KVL to say that P0 minus P12 plus P12 minus P3 should be equal to the delta P of the pump, which is a given value, so you can put a hat on that. Again, this is a closed loop. So the pressure from here to here, P0 minus P12, plus the pressure from here to here, the pressure drop from here to here, so this pressure drop plus this pressure drop should be equal to the pressure gain in the pump which is delta P of the pump. So if we follow that, we get that P0 of T minus P3 of T. So this one and this one will cancel. It's equal to delta P of the pump. Or P0 of T is equal to P3 of T plus the delta P of the pump. So this way we can eliminate P0 from the set of equations. So now let's go back to the equations.
and use all these reductions that we've made using KCL and KVL. So back to equations. And then we have B3. Let's look at the equations. Go back here and look at the equations. So the first equation had P0, which we have to eliminate, but we have an equation to eliminate that in terms of P3 and delta P of the pump. And that's it. So that one is solved. So P3 of the plus delta P of the pump. We're using this equation minus P12, which is now a variable that we'll keep, is equal to LA. So originally we have P0 minus P12, so we replace P0 with these. It's equal to LA DQA DT plus RA QA of T. Okay, and the second equation. We had C1 dP12 dt, so we have dP1 dt, but we've replaced the name P1 with P12 because we know that those two are the same, is equal to Q1 of t. We still have to eliminate that one. We're going to keep this one. This one we're going to keep, this one we're going to keep, and this one is known. Equation number three, P3 plus delta P of the pump so this was P0 minus P2. And now this P0 we replace with this equation. And P2 we replace with pressure 1, 2, which we'll keep. is equal to LB dQB dt plus RB QB of t. Equation number 4, C2 dP12 dt, which we'll keep now, is equal to Q2 which we have to eliminate. All right, now equation number five. Nothing changes in equation number five because we have P12 minus P3. Those two stay. Is equal to LC DQC DT plus RC QC of T. So those stay. And equation number six, the final equation, C3, DP3, DT, was equal to Q3, but from this equation right here, we can replace Q3 with QC minus QA minus QB, which are three that we're keeping in this equation, in this equation set. So it's QC minus QA minus QB. So this one's good, 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 and good. So the only things that we're left to eliminate from the set of equations is Q1 and Q2. So notice that equation or equations two and four are for the same state variable. That's P12. So it's essentially, this is an equation of the same variable. P12 is an equation for P12, so we can collapse it into one. Therefore, these two must be combined into one. So we have to combine equation two and equation four into a single equation because they're for the same state variable. So one easy way to do this is to add them up. And if we add them up, we get Q1 plus Q2. And when, if we get Q1 plus Q2, remember through KCL, we found this, that Q1 plus Q2 is equal to QA, QB minus QC. So this is what we're gonna do. So if we combine equation two and equation four by adding them together, we get C1 
dp12 dt plus c2 dp12 dt is equal to q1 plus q2. And this, remember, from one of the KCL statements, comes down to C1 plus C2 times DP12 DT. And this is simply QA plus QB minus QC, which are three flows that we're supposed to keep in our set of equations. So, the new equations with five state variables are reduced to the following. Again, the first equation is P3 minus delta P of the pump minus P12 is equal to LA dQA dt plus RA QA of t. Second equation is a combination of two and four. So it would be C1 plus C2 dP12 dt is equal to QA plus QB minus QC. Equation three is the old equation three, nothing to do to that one. This is plus, plus, yes, minus P12 is equal to LB dQB dt plus RB QB of t. Equation 4 was already combined with equation 2, so we jump now to the next one, which is equation 5. It's P12. Minus P3 is equal to LC DQC DT plus RC QC of T. And the final equation, which what used to be equation 6, now is equation 5. C3 DP3 DT is equal to QC minus QA minus QB. So now we only have five equations, and if we count the number of unknowns or state variables, again we have QA, QB, and QC. QA, QB, and QB, and QC. And they repeat in every single one of these equations. And as, as, far, as, for, as far as pressure goes, we have P12, and then we have P3. So we only have two pressures now to worry about because P1 and P2 were exactly the same. They were not, uh, there was nothing in between P1 and P2 to make them different. So we have five equations with five unknowns, and now this is a complete system. So therefore, our vector for an array of state variables or unknowns in this order goes as QA, because the first equation is QA over DT, and the second equation is P12, the third equation is for QC, for QB, I'm sorry. The fourth equation is for QC, and the fifth equation is for P3. So, the idea is to take the system that we have here, which we know now is a complete system, we don't have any extra state variables here, five equations with five unknowns, um, and write it as y dot, so that we pull the derivatives with respect to time to the left hand side and isolate them equals to a matrix of uh, coefficients times the vector of state variables, this vector, plus some right hand side vector of independent terms. So this is the state representation of the system. All right, so let's see. We're going to take these set of equations and rewrite it so that we isolate the derivatives on the left hand side so we have everything in this particular order okay so because we don't need this so rearranging
we have dqa dt isolate that to the left hand side and then we have minus ra over la times qa and minus 1 over la that multiplies p12 nothing that multiplies qb nothing that multiplies qc plus 1 over la that multiplies p3 plus delta p of the pump divided by la that's the independent term of that equation second equation dp12 dt so we have 1 over c1 plus c2 times qa uh, 0 that multiplies p12 uh, we have plus 1 over c1 plus c2 that multiplies qb we have minus 1 over c1 plus c2 that multiplies qc we have nothing that multiplies p3 and then we have nothing as an independent term that is equation two equation three we have dqb dt so basically notice that i'm just taking the set of equations that i have before and reorganizing it, rewriting each of the equations by isolating the derivative on the left hand side and organizing it as coefficients that multiply each of the dependent variables in that order qa p12 qb qc and p3 so this one was zero that multiplies qa minus one over lb that multiplies p12 plus um, minus rb over lb that multiplies qb plus zero that multiplies qc uh, plus one over lb that multiplies p3 plus delta p of the pump divided by lb so coefficients one two three four and five of that particular row and the independent term then dqc dt the fourth equation nothing that multiplies qa plus one over lc that multiplies p12 plus nothing that multiplies qb minus rc over lc that multiplies qc minus 1 over lc that multiplies p3 plus 0 as an independent term and the final equation dp3 dt equals minus 1 over c3 that multiplies qa plus 0 that multiplies b12 minus 1 over c3 that multiplies qb plus 1 over c3 that multiplies qc plus 0 that multiplies b3 plus 0. So these are the five equations organized and rearranged in that particular sequence right so therefore if you look at these and by inspection you can very easily identify that the matrix of coefficients of these state system of equations is the first row is ra la minus one over la zero zero and one over la second row is one over c1 plus c2 zero 1 over c1 plus c2 minus 1 over c1 plus c2 and 0. The row is 0 minus 1 over lb uh, minus rb over lb 
C rho and 1 over LB. Fourth row will be C rho, 1 over LC, C rho minus over C over LC, minus 1 over LC. And the final row corresponds to the final equation is minus 1 over C3, C rho minus 1 over C3, 1 over C3, and 0. It is very important that we don't miss, don't miss any of the sequences and that we don't miss any of the signs. If we made a make a mistake in one of the signs or in the sequence in which we write these coefficients, not only we might not get a solution, we might not get the correct solution, but also we might not get a solution at all because the whole system actually collapses and diverges. And but no fault of the numerical technique, it would be actual a fault of us actually determining determining this coefficient, this matrix of coefficients. The right hand side, vector of independent terms. The first one is delta p of the palm divided by LA. The second one is zero. The third one is delta p of the pump divided by LB. The fourth one is zero, and the fifth one is zero. So there's all the five terms of that array of coefficients. Okay. So all we need to do now is take this matrix, which by the way, I've always write it in general as a function of time, even though none of the coefficients here are functions of time, these are all constants, but eventually this will all, this, some of these will become functions of time because resistances, inductors, and compliances in particular are allowed to be functions of time. All right, this one you can see is explicitly a function of time and is indeed a function of time because of the pressure gain in the pump will be a function of time, those are the sinusoidal or whatever kind of function we decide to, to use. All right, so essentially uh, we have the system now as a five by five system, and all we need to do is take the uh, spreadsheet that we developed last class and adapt it by increasing k from four to five and introducing this matrix of coefficients and this right hand side vector of unknowns and the corresponding initial conditions. And obviously the values of these uh, particular uh, uh, parameters, LA, LB, RA, RB, LC, RC, C1, and C2, and C3. All right, so let's go to, um, let's go to MathCat. I've already pulled uh, the lecture here, lecture number 18, MathCat file for the lecture. And uh, let's see. All these pages aside before I lose them. Okay, so again, remember we're going to start from now on by uh, specifying the uh, the uh, directive that the origin is zero, is one instead of zero. The default origin is zero, so we don't have to specify it. If we want to change it, we change it by introducing the directive origin. That means that every array starts at position one instead of position zero. That's just for nomenclature purposes. Again, we're gonna use the same uh, pump uh, that has a maximum 120 millimeters of mercury and a minimum of 60 with a frequency of one. That generates an amplitude of 30 and an offset of 90. So the delta P of the pump is A sine omega T plus B, very simple. We're going to study these for the first 10 uh, hard cycles. So each hard cycle takes one second. So we're going to look at 10 seconds of analysis. And then we're going to start with uh, n equals 100. So again, not very resolved, the time steps. Each time step is 0 0.1 seconds, as you can see a little jagged uh, pump signal. And see if we can actually capture the solution here. So, so we uh, declare this range variable n from 1 to n plus 1. And the corresponding time array is a function of n that starts at 1, because now every array position starts at 1, is equal to the time step psi delta t times n minus 1. So starting at 0, ending at 10, uh, 101 positions altogether. All right. So for the sake of illustration here, let's make Ra, La, and C1 these values, Rb, Lb, and C2 these values and RC, LC, and C3, this particular value. So just, I wanted to make them different from each other, at least RA and RB. 
um, to to essentially differentiate uh, the flow that goes to the upper branch from the one that goes to the lower branch. Um, we make k equal five. Um, uh, of course, uh, we 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 have five state variables in this particular case, and then uh, we fill out the coefficient matrix. Remember, Control M gives you access to the panel to enter the values of the coefficient matrix um, or the, the corresponding elements of the coefficient matrix. Uh, and the right-hand side vector BP, B of T, I'm sorry, the element number one is uh, delta P of the pump divided by LA, element number two is zero, element number three is delta P of the pump divided by LB, zero and zero. So this is a five by five matrix. This is a five by one array. And this is the, uh, we for illustration purposes, we're letting the initial values be all zero. Okay, we can make that whatever we want. And basically, uh, QA, P12, QB, QC, and P3 will start from whatever values we specify here. This is exactly the same algorithm that we had in the lecture before. So it's going to be available in lecture 17 and in lecture 18. This will be uh, very useful for uh, homework problems and for the exam. And notice uh, it's the same thing. So we fill out the vector y, the position number one of vector y at all values of the state variables with the initial conditions y0. So we fill it out with 0, 0, 0, and 0 in all five columns of the first row of y. Then we loop over all the time steps from 1 to n. Let the time be equal delta t times n minus 1. And then calculate the predictors k1 for each of the state variables. And then the correctors k2, k3, and k4, all for each of the state variables. And then update the solution, each column of the solution, from k equal 1 to k the big K, each state variable, for the next time level, n plus 1, from the previous time level, n, using the combination of predictor and correctors. 1 6 of K1, 2 6 of K2, 2 6 of K3, and 1 6 of K4. Then we know that in the manner we wrote this set of equations, flow 1 is the first column of Y, QB is the third column of, of, of Y, and QC is the fourth column of Y, and then we can plot them all together. So QA is the red one, QB is the blue one, QA is what goes through the upper branch, QB is what goes to the lower branch, and QC is what goes to the compartment that is in series with the two parallel branches. Okay, it's the red line right here. Okay, similarly, P12 is the second column of the solution array. Well, P3 is the fifth column of the solution array by the same arguments that we established last time. We can access each of the columns of the two-dimensional array by uh, using the directive control 6. So we need to do say y control 6 2. So the second column of y is equal to p12 and the fifth column of y is equal to p13. So as you can see they, all, they both start at 0 because we specify the initial conditions to be at 0. Pressure 1, 2 is the pressure after the first two, um, or at the first two uh, compliances. It's equal to each other. P12 is equal to P1 is equal to P2. And that is the pressure. So while the pressure rises, the flow goes into the uh, capacitor. And when the pressure goes down, the flow goes out of the capacitor into back into the circuit. And it keeps doing that. Uh, and pressure 3 is the pressure at the third capacitor. And as you can see, that one is actually negative. Um, P0 minus P12 plus P12 minus P3, uh, it should be equal to the pressure gain at the pump. And we can calculate P0 from this, the difference between these two and compare to the pressure induced by the pump and know that those are equal. More importantly, we don't have a way to compare these to an analytical solution because there's no analytical solution for these, for these problems. And so the only thing we can do is actually increase the density of points of the resolution of time steps. To see if this is actually leading to the same solution, it's converging to a solution. Okay, if it wasn't converging to a solution, if the system wasn't set up correctly, the solutions will diverge all over the place, and increasing the number of time steps will only make it diverge even worse. Um, so let's look at these numbers and notice that QA actually settles down. The max, the peak of QA, settles down around 60 or so, a little bit over 60, uh, with a mean value of about 40 or 35 or so. 
uh, for the blue line, it you know, settles to a mean value of around 20. And for the green line, which is QC, it settles to a mean value of about, let's say, 50. Okay. Pressure 1, 2 settles to a mean value of around 20, while pressure 3 settles for a mean value of around, what, 330, minus 35. So if we increase this to, let's say, 1,000 time steps, and look at the solutions, notice that they are actually quite similar to before. It's just more resolved and hopefully more accurate. Well, how do we know they're more accurate? Well, accurate to an, a hypothetical exact solution or analytical solution that we don't have access to. So we have to trust this numerical results. Notice the, the red line, which is QA, centers around I don't know, 35 or 40 or so. Uh, the green line centers around 50 or so, <coughs> while the blue line, which is QB, centers around 20. P1, 2, the same thing, it centers around 20, while P3 centers around 35 or minus 35 or so. So these are converging to the right solution, and the same will happen if you keep increasing the number of time steps. So this uh, spreadsheet is uh, it will be now available on Canvas, along with these the the notes for these for today's lecture. So I suggest you use this to play around and uh, alter the results, alter the coefficients, change something in the coefficient matrix and notice that you will not get the results you want and, and, uh, and then use this accordingly for your homework problems and exams. So let me go back here. So this was it for today. And um, I'm going to post this lecture on Canvas shortly. Uh, I'm going to do it through a YouTube link. And uh, as I said, I'll post the PDF notes as well as the uh, MathCAD spreadsheet for your uh, use. All right. Good. Goodbye. See you next time.